All righty. Howdy, 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 everybody. We are live. And, um, you know, it's been a crazy time and I wanted to do some over the shoulder training. So I've got to optimize some ads for one of our campaigns. So I thought I would just kind of get you guys on here live and um, kind of go through my optimization and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as I'm doing it. So um, some of you know, I ended up getting COVID and it kind of slowed me down for a little bit there. And, but I'm back in the saddle and kind of back to work and, and rocking and rolling. So with that being said, I'm going to share my screen. And what we're going to do is this is part of Ecom Mentor Monthly. So for those of you who do not know, um, we have Ecom Mentor Monthly. And by the way, if you're watching this, uh, I think in the instructions or in the text of the post, you can go allow StreamYard to give you permission and when and then when you show up, it does it just shows up as a Facebook user, but you give StreamYard position to use your name, then I'll know who it is. So um, go ahead and give StreamYard permission to do that, and then I'll see your comments and ask your comments. And as we're going, if you guys have any questions about this, the campaigns and what's going on, let me know, and I'm gonna sh and I'll answer the questions as we go because uh, not a big budget on this campaign. Um, but kind of get some stuff going here. So I'm going to go full screen with this. Now, the first thing I'm going to let you guys know is I, I actually use a program that I love, and I actually recommend this for everybody who's getting started and who's new. It's called Ad Espresso, and Ad Espresso is a Facebook ads management software technology. It's not that expensive, but it's not really that cheap either. Um, I think it's $99 a month, but I had to pay for the whole year. So $1,200 a year, I think is what it costs. And I like it. And you're going to see why I like it here in a few minutes. Um, and I'll, and I, I'll go back and forth from Ad Espresso to the ads manager. So you guys can see the comparison of, of why I like Ad Espresso. And then on top of that, it, it'll, I'll, I'll, I'll share you where with you why is something that you would want to look at as well too, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to start at Espresso, and I've got, a, I've got a campaign going where we are running some ads for a free book. Um, we're giving away a free book, and you can see there's a couple of ads that were wrong because I, I, I placed some ads in a um, placement that's not working, so I'm just going to get rid of that. But he, here's the first thing I like. So I have two campaigns going. I have the free book offer video, and I have the free book offer with just a static picture. And it's pretty much the same ad, uh, but one shows a couple photos and one shows a video. Okay, so we're going to start here. I dated this campaign the date that I started it. So I haven't done any optimization on these campaigns because I always try to let my campaigns run for three days and give, because three days is kind of like that magic number that gives Facebook and its algorithm its chance to kind of optimize things for you, okay? So here's what I like about Ad Espresso. I love these cool, pretty little dashboards. So right off the bat, I can see I'm getting a three point, a 3% three click-through rate. My cost per click is $1.06. I've got 359 clicks. I've had 11,000 impressions. I've spent $382. I've got 26 conversions, and my conversion is $14.71 per conversion at a 7.24 conversion rate. So that, those are the KPIs that I really care about, right? Uh, so I like that, and I, and I love the fact that it just gives me that little stuff. So, and again, if I want to see that over here on Facebook Ads Manager, um, I have to come in here, and then I have to go here to my... Um, columns, and I have to customize columns. And as I customize my columns, I have to get and I have to choose and add and do this. And Ad Espresso already comes built out. I can customize Ad Espresso as well. But in here, I have to turn stuff on, turn stuff off. And I do that a lot. And I have done that. I have my own preset things for other campaigns. Uh, but I have to do that to kind of get the information that I want to get, right? So going back over here, this just makes it easy. Now, as I scroll down, it gives me an overview of, okay, my budget was $100 a day. 
I'm advertising on Instagram, Instagram story, mobile audience, and here's all my placements. I'm doing males and females. But the really reason I really like this is for doing split testing and trying to identify who is my market and what is my market, right? And then, and then stuff like this, look at this. So I'm split testing interest, placements, image, and gender. And you can see Kevin O'Leary, I'm getting a cost per conversion at $10.42. But with Brendan Bruchard, and these are people that I'm targeting, these are audiences that I'm targeting, $59.94. So obviously, I want to turn that off. Like that's killing my conversion. So when I spent $59 to get one person, you can see how uh, back up here, my cost per conversions is really going to be lower. As I optimize this, my, my, my conversions should go lower and lower and lower, right? Um, and then I can click on placements. And this is just a little tool that shows me um, mobile Insta article is really over $55, no conversion. So I spent $55 and got nothing on mobile instant article. So again, who wants that? And then this particular campaign, I'm running two separate images. I got one image of Damon John Holden Burns book. And I got another one of just the book itself, right? And I've had 26 conversions with this photo and zero conversions with this photo. Okay. Now again, Facebook is also optimized that for me automatically. So I've only spent $43 and the most of the spend went over here. So Facebook automatically optimized that for me because uh, I was doing a Facebook optimized test there. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and turn this off and just leave this photo because there's no sense of spending the money and not getting any conversions. 29 clicks is really not a good indication of what's going on. You want to see at least 100 and and closer to 300. See, after three days, 300 is more of a better indication. And then look at gender. So we're going to look at gender. So I'm paying, I've got 220 clicks, 133 clicks. I've spent 186 on women, 195 on men. So almost the same. Um, my my cost per impressions is, is way higher, $38 versus 29. You know, that's, that's like a 22% increase in cost, right? Then my cost per for conversions, 1228 to 1869. Conversion rates a little bit higher for women, my click to, to buyer ratio. And then my cost per click is way higher, right? So we're going to, we're going to turn off women, females. Like I don't really want to pay a uh, dollar 40 when I can get 86 cents clicks. And I don't want to pay uh, 18 when I can get 12. Okay. So these are different things that we can do. So then as I come down here, and again, I, I, this is a brand new campaign on a brand new strategy I've never done before. So I don't know the data. So I wanted to really split test the ages. So here's another really cool little screen where I can see I've had one conversion for 25 to 34, five conversions for 35 to 44, seven for 45 to 54, nine for 55 to 64, and four for 65 plus. And then it shows me again my cost per conversion. So look at this, $44 my cost per conversion for, on everybody on, on that one conversion under 34 years old. So that's killing my overall average, right? And my conversion rate's not good either, right? So we're going to want to we're going to want to cut those age groups out. And then of course I have my matter of fact I'll just take you there uh, to comments and this will take us we can actually go see the post on Facebook and you always need to go look at your ads, answer your comments. And uh, so there's the ad. Grab your free copy, The Billion Dollar Blueprint, today. I got a link there and then kind of learn more book here. And you can see 15 shares to six comments. Uh, now, again, three of the comments is me answering the questions uh, or answering other people's comments or commenting on their comments. Um, so, again, you can see how graphically interface this is to where it just really makes it easy to understand the age, the gender, what's working, what's not working. But I'm going to go ahead and go to all ads reporting. And over here, we can we can look at our tests. So we're testing on these two images. I'll hit graph it. And what we're going to do, again, we already looked at this in another screen, but you can see this, this one's not working. So I'm just going to hit that pause. It says, I look, I have 70 ads. Now, again, when I set this up in Ad Expresso, it's so simple and easy. It literally created, look at this. Let me go back over here. So we're going to we're going to choose the one book offer. 
We're going to choose how many ad sets. And you can see over here, there's 70 separate ad sets. And that's because we're split testing all kinds of stuff. And then in each ad set, there's just two ads, one with each picture to see which one's working right. Okay. So as we go back over here, we're going to just, we're going to pause 70 ads. So there goes 70 ads right there. Sure. You want to pause those 70 ads? I hit yes. So now those 70 ads that weren't performing are now paused. So now I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to hit gender and I'm going to go graph the male and female. Remember how we looked at female and female really wasn't working. And you can, again, you can see the blue line and the, and the red line. Uh, the, the red line was male and the blue line is female. And you can see that uh, the trending was kind of getting better, more even, but still the female was is too high for me so i'm going to click here and i'm going to i'm going to change and pause 68 ads yep pause them so now all of those female ads are paused okay now i'm going to come over here to interests and i'm going to graph my interest now we're running ads for the damon john audience gary vanerchuk john maxwell brennan bruchard kevin o'leary and my logic was these people teach people how to run businesses so if they might want to book on how to build their brand and you can see this purple one, Brendan Bouchard's way off the charts. Conversion rate's terrible. So we're going to click Brendan Bouchard. We're going to pause Brendan Bouchard. That's 28 ads. So those 28 ads have been paused. Then the next one is we've got $18 for John Maxwell, $15 for Damon John, $11 for Gary Vanerchuk, and $10 for Kevin O'Leary. I'm okay with that. I don't want to pay more than 20. My, my KPI, do I want to stand there's 20 and I really want to get it down to 15, but maybe because I've now optimized the female, the women and the image, this is going to get down under 15 and it's going to be a little bit better, better for us there. So we've optimized that. And now we're going to look at placements and you can see we're Instagram, Instagram story, mobile audience, mobile messenger, desktop, marketplace, mobile instant article. And again, you can see the conversions. We have zero, zero conversions for mobile instant articles. So we'll go ahead and pause those 20 ads. Uh, 680, 10, 11, 16, 18, and 28. So this 28 is too high for me. So we're gonna we're gonna turn off those ads. So now we pause those 20 ads. Okay, so now I've optimized the entire campaign and I can go back to the dashboard and kind of look at what's, what I've got going on here, okay? Now, the first thing I want to show you guys is because I've killed those campaigns, I've also killed part of my budget. So my budget was $100 a day. So see, now my budget's down to $32 a day. So I want to keep the same budget, but I want to keep it with these optimized results. So I'm going to hit the pencil, and I am going to increase my budget back to $100 a day. So it's gonna, it's going to take my budget back to $100 a day for all active ad sets, and it's proportionally based on the ad set's current budget. And or I can do evenly across all ad sets. So um, I'm gonna go evenly across all ad sets because I want to give the even even amount of money to the different audiences, and we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'll hit apply. Now, again, to do what I just did over here in Facebook Ads Manager would have taken me hours. Okay. But normally, I don't run these big split tests and 70 ad sets and all these different split tests manually set up. I use Ad Espresso to do my to do my split testing and to create those campaigns for me because it's just so efficient, so easy. And then as I start to know my numbers and know what's going on, then I'll come back in over here and I'll create my campaigns in here, but they won't be quite as complicated with quite as much split tests. And then what I can do over here is there's some things I can do in Facebook Ads Manager that I can't do in Ad Espresso. So I use both of them effectively. But again, to do what I just did with optimizing all those ads and turning all those ads off, would have taken me well over an hour over here. And you saw me do it in what less than 10 minutes. So you guys understand, you guys follow what I'm doing. So, so what we're doing is we're testing audiences. We're testing male and female ages. We are testing placements. Uh, we are testing um, the images. 
And I actually want to go in and, and, and because I didn't split test the ages, I can't turn off this age group. I can't turn off this age group. So the next time I run some ads, I'll just keep in mind, I don't really want to advertise the 25 to 34 because it just it's just not paying for me for, for my marketplace and what I want to do there. So now what I'll do that I've done that is I will, um, you know, I know that I'm on the 15th and I typically do them on the third day and late in the afternoon and it will do what it's going to do the rest of the day. And then starting to the 16th, I'm going to run it, let another three days. So 16th, 17th and 18th with these settings. And we'll kind of see how things switch around, how things do it. Okay. So let's do it one more time with the video funnel. So now we're going to just change to the video funnel campaign. And you can see here that the video funnel is not, is, is not performing anywhere near as good as the images. Only 12 conversions, uh, $2.45 a click, $31 a conversion. So I don't know if I'm going to even keep this one running, but let's, let's go ahead and look at what we got going on here. So again, the 25 to 34 is not doing good at all. $48, 35 is 21, 45 is 55, 29. These are not doing good at all. We do have one comment. I haven't looked at this. So let's go over here and eight shares. The shares to comment is really good. So you really want to get shares and you really want to get comments. And here's the video. I actually made this video. Um, and I, obviously it's not performing that well, but 32 likes. Now here's a little secret that you guys, whenever you're doing posts, and advertising, make sure you go to your ads and your posts, click here, and then it's going to pull these people up that like, they, they either they either thumbed it up, hearted it, or gave it a, a smiley face. And then you invite them to like your page. And then that way, as you advertise to them, this gives you more better, better bang for your buck for advertising. So you invite those people to like your page. All these individuals who gave a thumbs up or something, let's invite them to like the page. And then that way they become more and more followers and get organic stuff like that. So you always want to do that on every post you always do on all your stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and like that and say, yeah, thanks. I'll just give them a little thanks. Let them know that, Hey, we're here. Right. Ah, I don't know who this thanks pennies is, but I try to do thanks. Got to do a space. And then I gave him a little thanks. There we go. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now we'll come back here. All right, so again, let's look at this. Male and female. Males are under my $20. Females are at 90. Oh my Lord, it's killing me. Let's go to look at the placements. $85 for mobile marketplace. That's killing me. No way, I hit it. And interest. Maxwell's not doing well at all in the videos. So again, what's interesting is that you think that they might be doing the same as far as pictures to videos, but they're not. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I can just get here right here too. I can hit see full stats. So this is going to take me to the, the, the complete dashboard. So we got Damon John, Gary Vaynerchuk, exact same targeting as the other campaign, one with videos, one with books. Okay. So you can see here, 42, 24, 23, 16, and zero. So we spent $65 on John Maxwell, and we got nothing. So we're going to turn off John Maxwell. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, which, Gary, we were doing good with the other one. High conversion rate, 8.33%. That's good. Um, cost per click, 352 just is not cutting it. Um, forty-two dollars not cutting it. Gonna have to cut it. Gonna have to cut it. Okie dokie. And then Brennan Bruchard. See, we're doing terrible with Brennan Bruchard and the other one, and he's still over our twenty-dollar threshold. Let me see if there's anything here that might indicate that that's gonna come around. Forty-nine. Click through rate two point three. Cost per click. Now I'm gonna cut Brennan Bruchard. Now the other thing too is because I'm killing these ad sets. I'm going to go do some research. Matter of fact, we'll do some right when we're done here, and we'll try to find some other audiences that we can add to it, okay? 
So we'll leave Damon John, Kevin O'Leary as the two people, the two interests we're going to continue to market after. Uh, we'll go to gender. We'll graph. We'll, we'll hit the gender button here. Male and female. Okay, conversion rate twelve percent, much better. Two point seven percent. So we're going to kill the females here. Pause those twenty four ads. Okay, and then let's go to placement. Okay, so we got desktop, Instagram, story, mobile marketplace, mobile instant. Instagram's 80 bucks. Oh, nothing for mobile marketplace. Let's kill those 10 ads. Um, $15 here. That's good on the desktop. Mobile instant article. We've had five. Now, see, in the other one, the mobile instant article was terrible, right? So see how video with mobile instant articles converting, but image is not. So this is why you have to split test and test because you just don't know. And as you start to optimize and know your know these numbers, know what's going on, you're going to – every little bit, $3 here, 2% there, $1 here, it gets your average cost down to where you're you know you, you're not making money to you are making money. Uh, Instagram story is kind of close. It's a three dollars over my 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 thing. My conversion rate is twelve percent. And because we turned off the females and some of the other optimization, I'm gonna leave that and see if that one can kick into gear. But I will I will turn off the Instagram because that's just uh, eighty bucks for one conversion is not working. Okay, so now we've optimized that one as well. So now I want to go back to the dashboard and again we have to increase my budget again back to where. I want it to be $100 a day with these optimized numbers, and we'll see how it goes. Now, see, killing all those ads took my budget down to $12. Bucks. Um, so now if I go here, and we're going to edit this, and we're going to give it $100 a day, and we'll go evenly across the ad sets, and we'll hit Apply. And now it's going to change that budget back to $100 a day. And we're going to see how things go. So, again, all these changes have been made over here um, in, these, in these campaigns. You can see that the ads have been turned off. And if I go to the ads, you'll see that they're turned off. Let me do this. Let me highlight all these ad sets. And then we see the all the ads. That was 140 ads. And you can see none of them have enough information or, or, or buyers to where they've come out of their learning stage. You got to get like 50, 50 buyers per ad to get out of this learning stage. Okay. So, again, you see how that was to, uh, to, uh, to do that how easy that was to optimize. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the, in the comment box. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer some questions. And in the meantime, let's go over here to audience insights. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go back here just for my memory sake. Let's go back to the first campaign, the book offer. And let's go to all ads reporting. And then let's go on to my interests. And so over here, my cheapest was Gary Vaynerchuk. So let's go over here to Audience Insights. Uh, and you guys really have to go through and learn just get into your business manager, get into your ad account and click around and look around and kind of see everything that's going on here. So you kind of learn what's going on in your Facebook ads account. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated than, uh, than people think. Okay. So now I'm going to go here and we're going to type in Gary. Vaynerchuk. Okay. So this is really, really simple methodology. So now we're looking at Gary Vaynerchuk in the United States, and it starts to tell me the ages and the genders and the education level. But really what I look at is page likes. 
Okay. And I come down here to what other pages of people that are like Gary or that like Gary, who's I'm, who I'm advertising to, who, who else is like him? So people who like Tim Ferriss are 138 times likely to like Gary Vaynerchuk. And people who like Eric Thomas are 120 times likely to like Gary, Vayner, Gary Vaynerchuk. So these numbers over here is, is, is a way for us to find additional audiences. So I'm going to, I'm going to go, I can go run some ads for Ter Tim Ferriss. I can go run some ads for Eric Thomas, Mark Cuban, Les Brown, Tony Robbins. Right. Um, and I could even, so I could, I could test all of these audiences. Right. So I could test all of these audiences to see which ones might work. So what I might do is I might come in here to create a new campaign, test these new audiences. Um, but also then as I test the new audiences, I'll, I'll go to men, I'll, I'll fix the age group. And matter of fact, let me just do that. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. So if I go over here to my campaigns, I'm going to kick in another campaign here for us. So what I'm going to do is the video is not performing well. So we're going to click that campaign. So now we're on this campaign. I'm going to show you how simple this is, right? So now we're going to duplicate this campaign. Okay. This time we're going to test some other audiences we're gonna, and we're going to get rid of some age groups. So I hit copy campaign. Now it copies that entire campaign over for me. And now I'm going to change the date. So I know what date I started it, 15. And I'm going to type uh, new audience. So I just know what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to an external website. Okay. So I'm looking for conversions. I hit proceed. I'm going to leave everything else the same. It seems to be working fine. I am going to get rid of this picture because there's no sense in running ads to that picture because it's not, not converting. The links, everything else are the same. Um, here's where I get to choose which ones I wanted. So now I didn't, I don't remember which ones I turned off on that other campaign. So let's see. Uh, I think I turned off. Well, let's do this. Let me go. Let me open up another tab. Um, let me go back and look because I can't remember. I should have taken notes. Why is it saying my app? My thing expired. Yeah. Expire. Huh. Technology. Oh, just locked me out. Ah. All kinds of pretty charts and graphs for everything you're doing. I actually logged into an old account. That's what the problem was. So now I need to go to all ads reporting and placements. Which ones did I turn off? So I turned off mobile and mobile instant. So instant article and I'm afraid that it's going to lose all my stuff here 
mobile marketplace. Okay. I got my purchase pixel, that's for conversions. And hit proceed. Now, here's where we're going to go, and we're going to jump this to 40 years old. And we're going to stay 40 to 65. Okay? Now, over here, we're going to delete these audiences. Okay? So now I'm going to go back over here, my audience insights, and go, who, who did I want to do? I wanted to do Tim Ferriss, Eric Thomas, and Mark Cuban. So we'll do Tim. Ferris, it's looking for him. See, it's a little spinning right here. It's looking for him. Okay, so it's what you're saying about your ads running, but I'd like to know about making the ads first, then work on what you're doing. I'm interested in learning how to do ads. Well, this is part of it, right? And right now I'm creating a campaign. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll show you that. I'm not sure who that was. I wish I could see your guys' names. Um, okay, so we'll do Tim Ferris. Uh, Eric Thomas and Mark Cuban. So we'll do Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is a super cool um, motivational speaker. And we'll try Mark Cuban. Although I don't think Mark Cuban is a good... I'm going to do uh, Tony Robbins. I don't think of Mark Cuban as a guy who teaches people how to build businesses and brands. Whereas T Tony does have that. And Tony's a, Tony's a big audience. Look at that, 19 million people. So this time we'll go with the different age group. We're only going to go with male. So I turned off, so I'm not going to do any female, just male. And I should exclude the people that have bought the book because I don't want to advertise the people that bought the book. Uh, and I don't have, I haven't created a custom audience. So you have to go to your custom audience and you have to create a custom audience of your buyers and you should exclude those. I'll come back and do that. Okay. And then I'm going to hit proceed. And now it says, Hey, what do you want to split test? Uh, placement, interests, and I can also split test um, relationship. Are they married? Are they not married? Um, I, I, you know, if I, you can only do so many splits, so I could do education. Are they high school graduate? Are they college graduate? And you start to drill down on some of this stuff. And you see, so I'm going to go ahead and this time I'm going to do relationship stats. I want to see, is it married, single? What kind of uh, men are actually buying the book? Proceed. Now it takes me to my budget. And now I'm going to, I'm going to start this. I never start these this late in the day. You always want to start them in the middle of the night, or not the middle of the night, but, you know, beginning of next. So I'm going to start at 12 o'clock, 12.01 a.m. So so that way it gets a full day spin tomorrow. Whereas if I tell us to go today, it's going to spend $100 between now, it's 4 o'clock, 4.30, and now midnight, and it's going to blow a bunch of money. So we'll start this tomorrow, and I'll go ahead and stick, stick at the $100 a day, and actually, I'm going to take this down to $50 a day, actually. So I'll put that as to $50 a day. And then down here, there's different choices I can do. I'm just going to leave them that, that all that is. And as we kind of get to know our day parting, the other thing we can do is we can say, like, I know that Fridays are bad days. So I can say, I don't want to advertise at all on Fridays. I want to save that money. Um, but I don't know enough data about this audience, what I'm doing here. But as I get to do that, you can turn your ads off during certain times of the day, back on during certain times of the day, turn them off at certain times of the night. And these are all the little things that you want to do that, you know, help you become profitable with your ad spend. Okay. And over here, proportionally based on ad sets, audience size. So you saw that the Tony Robbins had 19 million people, but the Eric Thomas had 1.3 million people. So let's allocate the budgets based on the size of the audience. And, and that should be, you know, a good, good thing to do. Okay. So I hit proceed. Now it's going to say, Oh, the budget's too low. So for, for me to do all those experience and split testing, I had to do, it says my budget has to be $180 a day. Okay. So I'm fine with that. I'll go ahead and do $180 a day only because I want to buy data. I'm buying data. 
and I need to know what that data is. The sooner I get the data, the better I can fine tune everything and make everything work for what we're doing. So I'll hit, there you go. Now it says I'm almost done and I can hit publish to Facebook. So it's creating a hunt right now. It's creating 180 different ads, like 60 different ad sets. And that's how easy it is with Ad Expresso. Again, to do that with Facebook Ads Manager, it'd take me hours and hours and hours and hours to do that. So does anyone have any questions? And does anyone want to hop on live and ask a question? If you if you do, I'll, I can share a link with you and you can hop on live and ask a question. Um, I know there's not that many people watching live. It was kind of a last minute thing. I figured, hey, I got to optimize these ads. I might as well go ahead and, and do a live and, and record it for everyone to see, you know, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Um, so really, again, you look at what we did. We optimized um, for male to female, got rid of the ones that were costing too much. We got rid of the at the age on the, on the new campaign that wasn't working. We got rid of the placements because I said, just put it everywhere. Just throw this out there and let me see where this performs everywhere. And I say, okay, it's not performing in these places. Let's get rid of those places. Uh, and again, it was, it was performing differently for the photo as opposed to the video. So you got to keep that in mind. So what happens is, is people just start creating these ads and they don't split test and they don't track this stuff. And you can do it, you can track it in Facebook Ads Manager, just more difficult. That's why I like to use Ad Expresso. And then when I really dial in my avatar and my audience, then I'll go into Facebook Ads Manager and, and, and create campaigns there. But I always use Facebook Ads Manager to scale. So, <coughs> and I'll, I'll set up rules. Another thing we haven't done yet is we'll set up rules. So I'll set up rules that says, hey, if this campaign or this ad or this ad set's not performing to this level for this KPI, for this, uh, whether it's a customer acquisition cost, whether it's a CPM impression cost or whether whatever it is, I can automatically have the ads turned off. And that's another thing that just Facebook is fickle. It changes. And Instagram, it's fake. it changes. One day it's you're making money and the next day you're not. And then and the next day you're making money again. So we'll create rules and we'll tell the technology to turn on and off the technology. So when you're asking, uh, how are we making these ads? Let me show you the ads. So there's a couple ways you can make them right in Ad Espresso, or you can make them. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make a post on the fan page itself, and then I'll go get that post ID and then use that post ID for my ad. Um, but typically you create the post right in your Facebook ads manager, or you create the post within Ad Espresso or you create a post right on the page and then use that post ID to run your ads. And I'm going to start, if, 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 if you're part of the Ecom Mentor monthly program, you can get started for a dollar, and, 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 but and if that's $97 a month, uh, we're gonna teach everything from A to Z on how to do this, right? So, and, and again, doing it for to me, this is one of the best skill sets you could possibly learn. When you learn how to run ads, and again, you have to have the budget. You, you Like, look, if you don't have the money to invest in your business and run ads, then, you know, it's a hobby, right? There's, there's, there's people out there that want to do this as a hobby, which is great. And there's other people that want to make, like, they want to fire their boss. They want to replace their boss. They want to, you know, make a car payment. They make a mortgage payment, make a house payment. And there are plenty of people making 20 grand a month. There's plenty of people making five grand a month. There's people making 100 grand a month. People buying Ferraris and all kinds of new stuff. Doing e-commerce and selling T-shirts and print on demand and manufacture on demand and drop shipping from China. So you can do it, but you, you have to learn how to advertise. You have to learn how to advertise profitably. Um Creating the store and all that kind of stuff is the easy part. Finding the buyers is the higher, harder part. And, and, and when, you, when I say that, too, it's like if you have the budget, we can show you how to do it. We can show you how to spend your money and find the designs, find the, create the ads, and find the ones that are going to they're gonna sell. But what I always try to tell people is, look, if you're, if you're doing this to make money and you want to make money, then – I use this term chasing trends is a good thing to do. So again, during the political season, you're selling t-shirts to Biden fans, you're selling t-shirts to Trump fans. That's chasing a trend. They're hungry buyers, right? Or things happen in, in our society. Things happen that you can kind of jump on the bandwagon and sell some designs. 
or you tap into something that's emotional for people. Like there's a lot of faith-based brands out there that are Christian and faith-based. There's a lot of veteran brands, you know, you can take, like you've seen those shirts where it's like, you can take, you can take my kids, you can take my wife, but you're never going to take my guns, you know, stuff like that. that are really passionate buyers. But I always tell people, look, one of the best niches is the family niche. Grandmas, nana, uh, you know, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons. Because if you create a family niche business and you cater to the family, it's all about getting a sale one time, but then the, where the real money is getting them to buy a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time. And if you sell a grandma something for their granddaughter and they can buy multiple things for their granddaughter, but they can also buy it for their daughter. They can buy it for their son. They can buy it. You know, you, you target the family. Every family, everybody has a mom. You know, people have dads, people have brothers, people have sisters, people have aunts, have uncles. So to have a family oriented niche site is a good, good niche. And it's easy to advertise to that niche as well, right? But there's lots of other niches. As a matter of fact, I was working, we're working on a lead magnet, 45 you know, hot niches that you could market to. You know, preppers is a great niche. Uh, gun lovers is a great niche. Um, potheads and, and you know, we, we you know, people that smoke pot and stuff like that, they buy stuff. You, you got to have really cool designs, really cool stuff. They can do that. So there's all kinds of things you can do with that and, and how you can, market to that niche, but you have to have a budget. And what happens with this advertising world is you might have a, you not might, you will have losers. You're going to spend money and not make money. You're going to spend money and not make money, spend money, and not make money. But then when you find that winning design and then you start to scale it, one design can make you a lot of money. I remember back in the days we were doing some grandma designs and we had one grandma design sold 50,000 over, over 50,000 t-shirts. And the other thing we've done a lot of is doing designs for fundraisers and working with raising money for charities. Um, you know, whenever there was a hurricane or whether there was some natural disaster, we used to create Texas Strong or, uh, you know, whatever. We, we'd create these, these designs, these shirts to kind of support. And we say, oh, we're going to, and we did. We donated money to uh, that particular fundraising activity. But then you get those customers and sell them something down the road. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, last call for questions. Let's see. I know what you're saying, but if you don't have any money to put into it, I guess you're not going to make any money. Yeah, no, if you don't have money to run ads, um, you really have to have a budget for that, right? So if you don't have money, and we're also going to be doing some trainings on all this stuff, you have to really get good and you have to spend your time organically putting your designs and your lifestyle images and your messaging on Facebook, Pinterest. Instagram. I mean, there are people that have built up Instagram followings and they start selling their merch to make money. Um, and then like there's this one client that she, or this one launch cart customer, she does tie dye stuff and she just, she didn't hardly have that many followers on Instagram. I, I think a couple hundred. And then she'd sell two or three of her tie dyes and two or three more of her tie dyes and two or three more of her tie dyes. And I'm not even sure if she's up to a couple thousand yet, but every time she does tie dye stuff, she sells out. And it was friends talking to friends, talking to friends and and so she would do that. So you have to really get focused on, you know, where does your customers hang out? What do they do? How do they do it? How do you get in front of them? And again, I like to use the example, I'm hang glider pilot. I love to hang glide. So I know where hang glider pilots hang out online. I know what websites they visit. I know different groups they're in and different chat rooms they're in. And so if I get, go in there and get active and my name gets active, then when I say, hey, I got my new store, I got these cool designs, tell me what you think. I'm going to get some people to come to my site and, 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 and like it. And the other thing, too, is just good old fan pages, right? It, 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 and there's a whole strategies for fan pages that, that we're going to teach, right? So you have to have the right strategy for building a fan page around your niche. And I use a real example of if I want to sell car shirts, right, shirts with cool cars and hot rods and stuff on them, how do I get that audience? Well, we create a fan, called, a fan page called Ford Fanatics. Because I'm sitting there going, I want to find all the people that are Ford fanatics. And, and the fan page is called Ford Fanatics. I think I got 7,000 followers all organically. So, and I just post pictures of cool Fords. Now I start putting some, some designs on shirts of cool Ford cars. I'm going to get some buyers, right? So I found a niche. I created a fan page not named after my company. 
Because if my company or my, my 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 designs, if I try to do that, then, then it's self-serving. You want to create a generic niche, dog lovers, cat lovers, bull, and even niche that down, bulldog lovers, nurses who love bulldogs, right? Grandmas who love bulldogs, grandmas who love wine. Create a fan page that speaks to that niche, and then you cr create posts and things that attract that niche and those people and build your fan base up. Same thing with Instagram and everything else on social media. It's all the same. So I hope that helps. Um, so how do you get customers my fan page if, if, if they're not buying? Well, if you have fans on your fan page and you're getting engagement and they're clicking on your link and they're not buying, they don't like your designs. You Got to come with new designs. You don't have the right audience. You're not hitting an emotional hot button, right? Again, people have to, and then there's all this trust issues. Like, who are these people? Should I buy from them? The number one thing we have to overcome online is trust. How do you do that? By becoming visible, by letting people know who you are, by talking about what you're all about, why you're doing what you're all about. And then on your website, and we, you know, we're going to go over that in our onboarding call tomorrow again. Like, what can you do on your website to increase trust? How do you do that? And, and, and then you just have to create things that people want and you do posts. Hey, would you buy this? And then I spend two or three or four or $5 advertising to see people would buy it. If I don't get engagement or people going, yeah, that's cool. I'd buy that. Then you, you don't have a good design or you have the wrong audience for that design. You got to remember there's a lot of competition out there and you have to, you have to figure out what people want, but there's a lot of people making money too. So it, it's, it's a, it's, it's a business and it's work. And uh, as we as we get launch cart with um, our other integrations, some of the stuff that we're working on and be able to add physical products, it's going to really open up the doors even more and more and more for you guys to have expanded product lines, expanded niches. OK, cool. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody. Uh, it's been going for 47 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and give it a give it a hang. I'm going to call it a day. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, look, if, if you guys are interested and you want to. Go to ecom. Let's see. I'm gonna see ecom ecom enter monthly. I think. See, I'm still moving slow. Enter. Is it on LaunchCart? If you go to LaunchCart.com, let's see. And then we go to the bottom. And. Oh, I don't have a link here. I'm going to have to put a link here. Okay, so I don't have a link there. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's ecom enter. Let's see. Yeah. So if you want to get in into our members area, in our membership area, you can get started for a dollar. Then it's 97 a month. And then in our membership area, we have conversion tactics and Facebook ads, free commerce. We have courses. I'm adding stuff to it. We have our you know, product research, email swipe files. All this stuff's included. I'm constantly adding new stuff to Ecom Mentor Monthly um, that can really kind of get you going. So if you're serious about your business, serious about really getting going, join us in Ecom Mentor Monthly, and uh, that'll help you. That'll help you with everything you're doing. So with that being said. Appreciate you. Do what I do. Wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude and tell somebody you love them. Talk to you soon. Have a great day, everybody.